Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about cloud engineer position. This position has been coined relatively recently, around three to four years ago. But nowadays, if you look through different vacancies available online in different companies, you may come across cloud engineer position. And as a matter of fact, this video has been driven by you guys because I've received a lot of messages on my email, a lot of messages by you in, on my Instagram or in the comments sections down below under my, some of my YouTube videos. And you were asking there about the cloud engineer position and if certain certification helps to become a cloud engineer or which certifications would, would help to become a cloud engineer. And your questions actually made me do a deeper research into this position. And while researching this, I came across a lot of YouTube videos that compare or provide the differences between DevOps and cloud engineer position. But I don't want to actually provide the differences between these two positions because I don't think that it is really easy to use these two positions interchangeably. To me, DevOps and cloud engineer have in some extent overlapping, but quite different responsibilities if we actually consider the real cloud engineer job. I know that some companies, they actually might sort of put the job description of DevOps engineer and name it cloud engineer. But if we talk about the real, real cloud engineer, it is not a DevOps engineer, but they still have the overlapping tasks in their description. To tell the truth, in tech industry, in IT, there are a lot of positions with some, with some extent of overlap between them. So it's easy really to come across something like DevOps and cloud engineer with some overlap. Fact number one is that cloud engineer position has in some aspects the smaller scope and in other aspects the bigger scope that he or she has to face at work. When we say smaller scope, I mean the cloud engineer doesn't necessarily has to know the hardware side of things. For example, it's good for him to know, but he doesn't have to know how to maintain the server room. So if company is on-premises company, the company most probably has a server room with servers, where they keep data, where their servers operate basically. They have to know more about hardware, how and what works how HTMI work, how Ethernet work, and etc. So all of this you normally learn in your A plus certification. But obviously if cloud engineer is working with a company that is hosted on the cloud and it doesn't have any on-premise infrastructure, or even if it's a hybrid company, but the specific responsibilities of a cloud engineer are related to the cloud specifically, then he doesn't have to know, or she, sorry, doesn't have to know how the hardware side of things work. But when it comes to the bigger scope, I mean that the cloud engineer is required to know most of the products of the cloud providers that the company is on. Since the cloud engineer is responsible for not only administering the cloud, providing the solutions to the cloud deployment, he or she might be also responsible to set up the continuous integration, continuous development chain in the cloud. So this means that the cloud engineer should know the, should know the responsibilities of system administrator on the cloud, the person who works as cloud engineer should know the solutions architect side of things, if I'm talking in certification definitions, and the person should know the DevOps side of things. So we need the system administration abilities to be actually able to add some instances to the cloud, to administer some services on the cloud, to set up the configurations properly, to set up, set up networking side of things, security side of things. He or she should know the solutions architect, the sol solutions architect side of things in order to be able to know how to put the deployment in the right form. For example, if there are different edge locations of customers of edge locations of the company, the, the cloud engineer should be able to set up the deployment in the way that reduces the latency. And thirdly, the fact that the cloud engineer is not a DevOps engineer doesn't free that person from the responsibilities to set up a continuous integration, continuous deployment chain for the company. So if this chain is on the cloud, the cloud engineer can be required to do that. And to do all of this, the cloud engineer, as I said, should be able to have some system administration skills and obviously to know the cloud very well. So for example, if there is a need for certain 
solution that is needed to on the cloud, the cloud engineer should be aware if that cloud provider does provide a specific solution. For example, if AWS provides an API security, let's say that the certain company is on AWS and they need API security. Should they get that API security from external provider? I mean that service from external provider or should they actually use something that is available with the cloud? And they will go with that question to cloud engineer and cloud engineer should advise if AWS has this solution, if AWS solution is competitive on the market or if they should opt for an external provider of that service. Needless to say, the cloud engineer is responsible for calculating the correct number of resources and correct capacity of resources when it comes to compute capacity, when to the CPU capacity, to RAM, storage, and etc. To every node of the cloud, the cloud engineer should select the most appropriate capacity that would be enough to deal with uh, workload and traffic of the company. Next thing that is important to mention about cloud engineer roles as that can be actually perceived something that limits the role is that most probably if you're a cloud engineer on AWS platform, you have more chances to build your career and continue your career in as being a cloud engineer in AWS platform. So if you have worked as a cloud engineer for five years in AWS platform, it would be harder for you to, con to compete with the candidates for a job that is on Azure cloud, to compete with the candidates who have been working as cloud engineers on Azure. And the same is for Google cloud or well, let's say the digital ocean or any, any other cloud providers available on the market. So when you are a cloud engineer, you become used to using one technology, one cloud provider, and you get to know that, that cloud provider in depth so that it's harder for you to switch to another cloud provider. But if you choose the cloud provider wisely, for example, if AWS is a market leader for, uh, among cloud providers, you obviously, when you choose AWS, you, ha you have more chances to continue your career as a cloud engineer in AWS throughout the career because you know you will be able to know more ab about AWS than anyone else in the market because you have been working as a cloud engineer on that platform for a long, long time. But of course, if you start as a cloud engineer on one cloud provider and then you wish to switch to another cloud provider, this is not hard at all. You will just have to learn new definitions because obviously AWS has its own definitions, its own way that the services operate, but Azure has its own definitions, its own new words related to, the, to how cloud works. But relatively, cloud services have the same logic in the way they work. Some cloud providers provide more services than others. For example, AWS provides more services than Azure or Google Cloud, but still it is manageable. But I just want to mention that whenever you work on one cloud, it is more likely that you will be attached sort of to working on that specific cloud through the, through the rest of your career. That will sound very Mm, very long really, but you're likely to get jobs that with the companies that, that work on the same cloud providers that you were working on in your previous experience as cloud engineer. It is also important to mention that in that case, you have to focus on cloud certifications. For you as a cloud engineer, cloud certifications on that provider will help to identify more services, identify better and have an in-depth knowledge of how cloud works, which is basically what you need to succeed in your career. Last thing that I want to mention is that when you're reviewing the job descriptions for cloud engineers, don't apply. I mean, apply if you wish, but first review the description itself and analyze for yourself what it looks like more, DevOps engineer or cloud engineer or anything else. As I said, since this vacancy came up re relatively recently, you have to be careful because some of the employers, some employers, they really put the job description of another position and name it cloud engineer. But you have to actually understand if it's really the cloud engineer job or maybe it's more like DevOps, which is interesting too, but just for yourself to have a better idea of what you're going to to, to do at your work. It will help you with the interview process throughout the employment of the jobs that you, you want to get to understand better what this job requires from you. 
This has been a short overview of the cloud engineer position and thank you for being with me today. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because it really motivates me to create more videos, to pass more certifications and to share my knowledge and my expertise with you guys. Thank you very much again and have a nice day. Bye!